Maldives wants its Indian tourist back, Indians say get lost. Maldives, a country with roughly 5 million people, and an economy that is dependent on tourism, decided to pick a fight with India, which is 11,033 times bigger in size and 2,800 times bigger than the Maldives population. It might appear that a small nation is displaying courage, by challenging a larger one. But I assure you, this is not the case. Maldives and India have enjoyed good relations for decades. India has helped Maldives in many ways, such as economically, by building hospitals, aiding Malay during the water shortage crisis, various aid programs, being the first respondent to assist Maldives during the 2004 tsunami, and providing river sand, as Maldives is surrounded by the ocean and lacks enough river sand to support its construction industry. India even protected them when their democracy was in danger. However, despite this history, Maldivian politicians initiated the first move and insulted not only the Indian Prime Minister, but also the Indian people. Now, Indians are the biggest contributors to tourism in Maldives, followed by Russians and Chinese. It doesn't make any sense to make derogatory comments about the Indian PM and its people, especially considering that they provide employment opportunities. Then why did they do it, you may ask. This was just because the Indian PM posted some pictures in Lakshadweep, located north of Maldives. There was another incident back in 2022, when an angry mob barged into the National Football Stadium in Malé and disrupted a yoga event organized by the Indian High Commission. The event was attended by ambassadors, diplomats, and members of the general public. The mob attacked some of them and vandalized public property. They held posters, declaring yoga to be against Islam's tenets. If yoga is considered against Islam, then why is it that Saudi Arabia, which is considered the heartland of Islam, the site of the two holy mosques, and where Saudi Arabia is committed to preserving Islamic tradition in all areas of government and society, is now advocating for yoga as a way of life? Saudi Arabia has been introducing yoga into universities and other regions since 2017. In December 2022, Saudi Arabia hosted an event to promote yoga and invited 11 Arab countries to participate. The event, named the Arab Youth Empowerment Program, introduced Arab youth delegations to cultural, sporting, and recreational developments in the region, including yoga. So after the derogatory comments about the Indian PM and its people, Indian citizens, not the government, started boycotting Maldives, and it was so impactful that tourists from India to Maldives slipped to the sixth position. So far, only 36,840 tourists have visited the island nation, a sharp decline compared to similar months in previous years. Now, efforts are being made to win back Indian tourists by conducting events across key cities in India. There are also plans to facilitate influencer and media familiarization trips to the Maldives in the coming months. This move, by the Maldives Association of Travel Agents and Tour Operators, might not be fruitful for them. This is because, people in India are fed up with the duplicity of Maldives. The current regime literally came to power, through an anti-India campaign, with the slogan India out, demanding India to withdraw its military troops, stationed in the island nation. How many Indian troops were stationed in Maldives? According to the Maldives government, 88 Indian soldiers were stationed in the Maldives to operate helicopters and Dornier aircraft. The helicopters were not stationed there to conduct military operations in Maldives, they are there for medical evacuation and disaster recovery activities. The same aircraft that could have provided airlift for a sick boy from Maldives after he suffered a stroke and had to be transported from his home in Garth Ali Valangili to the Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital in the capital, Malé. The country's national medical insurance company received the emergency evacuation request early on January 18 and arranged for a sea ambulance to bring him from Valangili to the nearest airport on the island of Kudu. The company later stated that it had planned to divert a scheduled Maldivian flight from Malé to Kadho to pick up the sick boy from Kudu. The plan, however, could not be implemented due to a technical glitch in the aircraft. The insurance company then arranged a chartered flight, which brought him to Malé in the evening on January 18. Unfortunately, the boy passed away at the Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital in Malé. 
His family was quoted by the media in Maldives, alleging that the delay in airlifting him to the national capital had led to his death. Maria Didi, the country's former defense minister and a leader of the opposition Maldivian Democratic Party, posted on X, asking, is the Mwizu government's refusal to use all available facilities, including the Indian aircraft, to save Maldivian lives justifiable? The MDP leader also referred to the Mwizu government's refusal to use India's planes and helicopters, available in the Maldives in a search operation the Maldivian National Defense Force launched after Naish, a 12th grade student at a school in Adu City, went missing, while catching lobsters in the ocean in December last year. And to be clear, those 88 Indian military personnel, who were in Maldives for the maintenance of the aircraft are not even armed. On the second day of assuming office, Mwizu officially requested the Indian government to withdraw its military personnel from the Maldives. Why would Indians want to go for a vacation in a country whose people and president are so hostile towards them? On the flip side, this controversy has resulted in positive outcomes for Lakshadweep and Sri Lanka. Online travel platform Make My Trip reported a 3,400% increase in on-platform searches for Lakshadweep since Modi's visit and the controversy. On the other hand, Sri Lanka received more tourists than Maldives in January 2024. According to Adadu, Sri Lanka had been experiencing slower tourist arrivals, compared to the Maldives for the past four years. Nevertheless, in January, Sri Lanka overtook the Maldives in tourist arrivals. A massive surge in Indian tourists visiting was one reason behind the 100% increase in tourist arrivals to Sri Lanka in January. Now, Indians have made up their minds not to visit the island nation, and I'm referring to the common Indian citizens, not the government, because the government hasn't issued any statements advising citizens against traveling to Maldives. In fact, India has authorized the export of specific quantities of essential commodities, such as sugar, wheat, rice, and onions, for the fiscal year 2024-25. Now, Maldives President Mwizu sought debt relief from India, this is the same president who said, we may be small, but that doesn't give you the license to bully us. India's reply to that was, a big bully does not give $4.5 billion.